Hello, and welcome to video number 53, Exposing the Jesuit Vatican Shadow Empire that rules all governments today through its United Nations world government apparatus and is waging war against humanity on all fronts. This includes the incremental deletion of cash and coins and the introduction of digital or e-cryptocurrencies in their worldwide program to eliminate all manually exchanged money, thus destroying freedom and enslaving all peoples monetarily. I'm speaking here about Jesuit Masonic magic money and sorcery. Dear listener, if you are already using your cell phone as a wallet, then unwittingly or not, you are a part of the problem. You are actively assisting the Jesuits to eliminate cash in all national economies and hastening your own material and spiritual enslavement. Here's what Russian author Fyodor Dostoevsky had to say about the Jesuit military. And I quote, The Jesuits are simply the Romish army for the earthly sovereignty of the world in the future, with the pontiff of Rome for emperor. That's their ideal. It is simple lust of power, of filthy earthly gain, of domination, something like a universal serfdom with them, the Jesuits, as masters. That's all they stand for. They don't even believe in God, perhaps." Unquote. Well, the Jesuits do believe in a God, but it isn't the God of the Bible, that's for sure. They are all Satanists at the top level. Here is yet another proof of the Jesuit threat of world domination in the words of Aloysius Fortis, 20th Jesuit Superior General, spoken to his assistants, including Johannes Rutan, in the secret Jesuit council at Chieri in Italy in 1824. <clears throat> and I quote, Dear brethren, and he's speaking here to the six assistants of the Jesuit General, our weapons are of a quite different temper from those of the Caesars of all ages, and it will not be difficult for us to maneuver as to render ourselves masters of all the powers already so much weakened. We need fear no lack of soldiers, only let us apply ourselves to recruiting them from all ranks and from all nations and drilling them into punctual service. But let us at the same time be vigilant that no one may suspect our designs. You well know that what we aim at is the empire of the world." Unquote. People, that threat will be complete when the Jesuit military order control all world finance through a centralized electronic money system and world religion through a Roman Catholic decentralized ecumenical system. The temporal and spiritual power of the Pope will soon be absolute everywhere. We are getting very close to seeing that happen. Okay, I want to talk here about crypto and token currency concept. What is this concept of digital money? It's the, it's the most incredible thing. Um, that has been devised. It is, it's absolutely diabolical. Digital or virtual currency is without a doubt the most dangerous scam in recent times. It will be the mechanism by which all humanity eventually is imprisoned. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. And what I'm saying is 100% true. Digital money is a yoke for imprisonment. Blockchain software is nothing more than an AI trap. The lure, first of all, is human greed and desire to get rich without effort, and secondly, the appeal to human vanity and laziness. 
this trap is similar to the other preceding financial tricks that have created economic booms and busts like bank loans or usury, fiat paper money, credit cards, stocks, shares, and hedge funds. This appeals to human pride. People always think they are so much smarter than the Jesuit scammers who created and imposed on mankind all the economic depressions and recessions of the last 300 years, even though history is littered with the record of multitudes losing everything and whole families reduced to destitution and servitude. If only they'd known who the perpetrators were who took their money, who cheated them out of their inheritance. The major difference with e-money is no one knows who controls this system. And let me assure you that someone is always in control. Keywords like decentralized and private or secure should set alarm bells ringing, but of course many are ignoring the warning signs. When will people ever learn that there is a terrible price to pay for greed and easy profits? Cryptocurrency isn't real. It is an illusion, just ones and zeros in computer code. People are buying nothing. Electronic pulses with something that is at least at the present time still tangible. And I'm talking here about paper money, coins, maybe even gold and silver if you still have that. E-money is in fact magic money that can disappear like a morning mist if and when the electronic medium gets turned off by the controllers. Can they do this? Oh yes they can. The Jesuits control it all. Here's the 2000 year old warning from Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17 in the Bible about what's up the road. Ignore this at your peril. And the second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. Well, who is this second beast? Well, the second beast is the Jesuit ecumenical system. It's the Jesuit ecumenical religious system that is currently now in place. That's what it is. The first beast is the Roman Catholic Empire. So these two beasts are working together to produce total domination over all the peoples of the earth. And they must have spiritual and financial domination over every living soul. That's the aim. Once they have this, you are a slave. There is nowhere to go. There is nowhere to run. Nowhere. What is being described above is a form of electronic payment system activated by uh, electric implants, chip technology, in the body by an electronic watch band or by a, a mobile handheld device of some sort. This also may allude to biometric marking technology employing fingerprint, iris, or facial recognition given as individual assent to a centralized system of worship and allegiance to the final beast, pope, world, dictator. I do believe it is very possible the system could consist of one or both of these methodologies of control working in tandem. They have to control everybody. Well, how do you control everybody? You control them by controlling their money. It's as simple as that. Cryptocurrencies will take us to the final stage before the above scenario in Revelation occurs. Very soon, 5G EMF technology will enable IOT, or connection of all things to the internet. Uh, IOT stands for Internet of Things. And mobile phones may become de facto personal payment devices. E-money may require implantation in the body of advanced chip technology. It has already begun in various countries. It is happening right now, apparently in Florida, in the USA. 
babies are being chipped at birth. So this is not something that's crazy. This is something that's very real and tangible. How long will it take to implement the system? I don't know. But we are moving very, very quickly towards it. So I, I do believe the time is short. <clears throat> As of July 8th, 2019, there are more than 2,322 different cryptocurrency brands trading with a total market capitalization of $349 billion. And that's what we're told. We actually, in fact, probably do not know the full extent of the assets or the money that's involved with cryptocurrency. Masses of people, great and small, are jumping on the bandwagon like rats following the Pied Piper to destruction. What many are unaware of is that e-money is both payment network and currency at the same time and is definitely subject to the whims of inside traders. And who are the inside traders? Well, the Jesuits are the inside traders. They know everything that's going on. That's why they never lose when anything goes wrong with the money markets. They're the ones who cause the problems. They're the ones who benefit from the problems every single time. It's the little man that always gets shafted. This situation where payment network and currency occurring in one um, has never occurred before in history. Supposedly the banking middlemen get cut out of the transaction loop. Think about this. Really? I guess they're just going to accept this and roll over, right? Is it even logical to assume the bankers are just going to die off and allow another worldwide system to take over their business without a fight? You wouldn't think so, right? However, so far, there doesn't appear to be much in the way of concern or retaliation against Bitcoin. And I do believe B equals bit or beast by the banks. So there doesn't seem to be any concern by the banks, right? Politicians are even beginning to legislate in favor of cryptocurrencies. So what's going on? Well, this is proof that all the banks are controlled by the Jesuits. Otherwise, they'd be up in arms. There'd be craziness going on with people trying to stop this new system from bumping out the banks. Okay, so what am I not getting here about money systems, financial power, and the lessons of history? Bankers don't seem to be threatened by a private peer-to-peer -peer currency transaction system that will eventually put them out of business. That doesn't add up when we know the ruthlessness of Jesuit Masonic bankers and their dealings in modern history. Excuse me, the light seems to have gone out. I am recording in a public space. Um, <clears throat> well, it doesn't make sense unless the Masonic bankers are already covertly controlling cryptocurrencies and a supposedly impregnable decentralized blockchain software. Personally, I don't believe the hype about blockchain software being secure or unhackable. It is my opinion that the bankers aren't reacting, and this is simply because they actually control it all under the Jesuits. They're not concerned. Whatever opposition you may hear about in the news is merely hype and public theater. This is done to arouse curiosity in the masses and temptation to participate or be left out while all your friends get rich. I say, buyer beware. When I say bankers, and as I've stated before, I mean more accurately the Jesuit Vatican Bank or Bank of International Settlements BIS, which controls all international bank transactions, including the IMF and World Bank under a giant world corporate banking umbrella centered in London, the Jesuit banking capital. There is no such thing as an independent bank. This is a fiction. Let's talk a bit here about the Satoshi Nakamoto blockchain fiction that has everyone dazzled like deer in a spotlight. 
Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Satoshi Nakamoto, the character who purportedly invented decentralized peer-to-peer -peer financial transaction software, is a myth that has fooled millions of gullible people. Maybe they deserve what they get for their greed and blind acceptance of unverifiable stories. People would rather believe in myths than truth, and the truth is people are being played like suckers. Satoshi Nakamoto is not a real person, but a hero figure front behind which diabolically clever people are manipulating base human impulse for easy material wealth. No one knows who this character is. No one knows who is behind the original blockchain software platform either. People just trust what they don't know. And this makes a lot of sense, right? Wrong. It makes no sense at all. Satoshi Nakamoto is an internet meme, a fiction created to dupe the foolish because manipulating human psychology is what the Jesuits are masters at and they do control the world financial system, 100%. Chasing a fiction is simply illogical, especially when it comes to risking the rapidly dwindling financial independence remaining to humanity, flawed as it is. Here are the Bitcoin blockchain promises. Apparently, it will supposedly enable decentralized private financial transactions. This is a claim that is not fully verifiable. The blockchain format will supposedly be secure and unhackable. This claim is also not fully verifiable. All software programs can be hacked. The cryptocurrency peer-to-peer -peer format will create personal independence. Well, this claim is made to lure those currently outside the banking system so that there are no unbanked individuals left anywhere in the world. Actually, the reality is opposite to the claim. Outside the digital system, a person is relatively free as they are dealing with banks and can make manual transactions with cash and cards or they can barter. Inside the electronic system, a person is captive to electronic pulses controlled from who knows where and loses what little financial freedom they still have. The cryptocurrency system will just be a supplementary system to the front money systems, i.e. just another choice. This is not true, as the real aim is to eventually supplant the current systems with digital money so there is only one system. This will ultimately mean no choice. Can you understand what I'm saying here? Everywhere you go and look at it and examine it. Once you're locked in, there's no way out. <clears throat> here are the mechanics of the scam. Number one, convince everyone to go the next step to relinquishing in your hand real money, banknotes, coins, gold, promissory certificates, etc., even credit cards, for the promise of status. It's cool, convenience, and instant wealth. Number two. Number one will be accomplished by employing specialists in finance and marketing to whip up a media advertising storm through every avenue about the benefits of e-money, especially to naive young people who are unaware of the implications and who do not know how money systems operate. Number three, when critical mass has been achieved, like 90% of humans are locked into digital money, the plug will be pulled on all other financial options. So there is no other choice and no way to opt out of the new digital monetary system. Number four. Finally, compulsion or force will be employed to compel the chipping or biometric registering of all humans to enforce compliance to autocratic world government rule. This means no compliance equals no access to money. Here are six inherent risks of cryptocurrency. Number one, the spoofing, payment information, and phishing. So these systems can be, they can be played around with. You have no idea who's, who's got access to them. And if you're just going to believe 
on trust what bankers say, then you would have to be out of your mind. Number two, the real possibility of hacking a payment gateway. Yes, this is possible. Don't believe the lies that it's not possible. Of course it is. Number three, the possibility of user address error. If you make a mistake, you've lost your money. Number four, the possibility of the loss of a wallet file. Has this happened? Yes, it's happened already. People have had their wallet files, their blockchain wallet files stolen, taken, pilfered, whatever you want to call it. It's happening already. So don't believe the lies. Number five, insecure ICOs or initial coin offerings over which the average man has no understanding about or control over. Why would you place your trust in this? Number six, spoofing a user address. Playing around with user addresses. Can this happen? Of course it can happen. So these are points and very important points to consider. Here's some very important news. This year Facebook has announced its intention to launch its own cryptocurrency called Libra. That's interesting. One of the signs of the Zodiac. Facebook, like Google and its subsidiary YouTube, are CIA fronts controlled by the Jesuits through their Masonic corporatocracy. They're fronts. They're not there for your and my benefit. They're there to gather information and eventually become part of the world control system. Facebook, with 2.41 billion active monthly users, 241 million of which are in India, along with China's WeChat and its WeChat payment system, which now has over 1.06 billion active monthly users, leave little doubt as to what comes next if these platforms should ever agree together to adopt a common crypto payment system. These sites cover more than half the world's population already. There is no doubt in my mind that all other major platforms like Amazon, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, and QQ, whether social or commercial, will jump on the wagon and follow suit. It'll lock up all world trade, all world financial transactions. This then would morph into a one world beast or bit coin control styled currency system locking everyone into buying and selling with electronic currency only. Keep your eyes on the big online platforms as they only as only they have the market traction to induce change on a worldwide level. The Jesuit bankers will eventually subsume all the major players in Europe, Russia, North and South America and Asia. This is just around the corner people. Heads up. Representative of one mainstream view of cryptocurrencies is Joe Lubin, co-founder of Ethereum and founder of Consensus, who stated, and I quote, instead of adversarial relationships between corporation and customer, we will have collective common good relationships on networked open platforms. It'll take time, yes, but the uptake has been swift. As the ongoing building of new tokenized networks and business models on the Ethereum network has shown us, perhaps it will not take nearly as long to convince people of these new systems as it did Marco Polo in Europe." Unquote. Really? First of all, there's no solid proof Marco Polo ever went to China, let alone introduced paper money to Europe. It's far more likely than the Templar Knights did with their promissory notes issued in the 12th century in receipt for their services, safeguarding the gold and silver of wealthy travelers to the Middle East or the Holy Land. Typically, Lubin nurses a false pie-in-the-sky utopian and communitarian dream of equal financial access for all. He assumes incorrectly, like most players, that cryptocurrencies are independent uncontrolled, tamper-free blockchain platforms. His assumption is incredibly naive. The Jesuits have never once relinquished control of world finance since 1913 when they were able through murder and deception to establish their Federal Reserve private central bank in their American Empire and subsequently also 
in every nation worldwide. Every nation has a central bank, all controlled by the Vatican Bank. Lubin further states, and I quote, instead of wealth being controlled by a few state actors and the top 1%, it can be more evenly distributed. While just 1,000 people own 40% of the Bitcoin that has been mined, cryptocurrencies writ large could eventually lead to more wealth distribution through the power of decentralized networks. Integrated systems invite the creation of a larger network where the potential to increase capital increases in orders of magnitude proportional to the number of users who connect to them. Giving developing countries access to this technology, therefore, will help raise the whole system, not just the unbanked." Unquote. Well, once again, there is a blind assumption by Lubin that decentralization is somehow possible in a centralized world with the use of words like could, could being used. The Jesuits hate decentralization and are using the concept as a lure to create a false sense of security and trust in participants. It is yet another Jesuit deception. Jean-Claude Trichet holds a different, seemingly more cautionary view of cryptocurrencies. Jean-Claude Trichet, president of the European Central Bank from 2003 to 2011, recently slammed Bitcoin and Facebook's Libra project, warning Bitcoin is not real and not the future of money. Well, no kidding. He went on to say, and I quote, I am strongly against Bitcoin and I think we are a little complacent, unquote. Trichet was speaking during a panel discussion at Beijing-based media group K. Zin's annual conference last weekend. His comments were first reported by the South China Morning Post newspaper. He said, and I quote, Bitcoin itself is not real, with the characteristics that a currency must have, unquote. Trichet also slammed Bitcoin and cryptocurrency speculation, which he branded not healthy. Even if the cryptocurrency is supposed to be based on underlying assets, I am observing a lot of speculation. It is not healthy, Trichet said, adding that buying a cryptocurrency is, in many respects, pure speculation. Well, no kidding. You'd have to be a crazy person not to realize uh, that it's pure speculation. Of course, Trichet is right, but then again, he's a puppet of the Jesuit money system and is being paid to make sensational remarks that only spark increased interest in cryptocurrencies by the ordinary guy on the street. I doubt seriously that Trichet holds this view privately. He's been put up to it to make these statements uh, because this is what the Jesuits do. They say one thing and on the other hand they say something else and they get people's opinion all divided. Please note, the Jesuits are Luciferians and the masters of sorcery. They've been casting spells covertly on humanity for 500 years. Yes, they do. They gather together routinely, strategically, and cast satanic spells on the world, on you and me, luring us um, in many ways into our own slavery. That's what they're doing, people. Bitcoin is another spell, a digital spell. It is hypnotizing the naive and unlearned by appealing to a base, sensual lust for profit and convenience. The Jesuits have declared many times that they will have rule over the whole earth. Control of finance and religion is the key to that control. The promise cryptocurrencies make is too good to be true. Sadly, many will ignore the warnings and eventually become enslaved. Nevertheless, I will continue to warn people in any way I can because I do care. Even when people don't care. Bitcoin is not 
currency and has no real value. It is an instrument for speculation without any regulation or oversight. Actually, paper money today has no value either. However, gold and silver do have value. Think about it. Who has possession of most of the world's gold reserves? China and the Vatican. Ask yourself, why? The simple answer is that Jesuits and their Chinese agents recognize what real wealth is and stockpile vast reserves of gold while conning the people of the world with worthless digital currencies in order to confiscate what existing savings people still have. Anyone who buys into cryptocurrencies is supporting this system of digital financial control and speeding up the demise of financial freedom for every human being. They, we, are responsible for what follows after freedom of choice is gone forever. I'm issuing a strong warning here that cryptocurrencies are a trap, so listener beware. People, the Jesuits' one world system is already in place, but not in its entirety. There is still time to choose freedom and make the Lord Jesus Christ your God and King. Anyone who joins the one world beast system financially and spiritually will perish eternally. There are only two choices, Satan's world kingdom under the Jesuits' final antichrist, Pope King, or the Lord Jesus Christ as God. Time is running out as the Jesuits plunge the world into moral and spiritual darkness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, Paul urges his readers, For he says, In the time of favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the time of favor, now is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ declared in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come, comes to the Father but through me. And that is the bottom line. Now is the day of salvation, as there may not be a tomorrow for any of us. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone, so I urge you to choose carefully in the light of what is happening worldwide. Thank you for listening, and may God continue to reveal to you the truth about this present dark age and God's plan for mankind. Please share this video with others so that they too may be warned about what the Jesuits are doing and the coming world dictatorship. I hope to see you in the next video.